gonna run to the store and get a few things. I'll pick you up when you're done. Okay. I, I like it a little better when you stay, but all right. <laughs> hey, Sheldon. Hello. I'm here for my haircut with Mr. Zanofrio. I'm sorry. Uncle Tony's in the hospital. He's pretty sick. Oh, dear. Mr. D'Onofrio's in the hospital. Why do these things always happen to me? I could cut it for you. You're not Mr. D'Onofrio. I get my haircut by Mr. D'Onofrio. You believe this guy? Excuse us for a second. Sheldon, it's okay. He can do it. He's a barber. He's not a barber. He's the nephew. He's an example of the kind of nepotism that runs rampant in the barbering industry. And besides, Mr. D'Onofrio knows exactly how I like my hair done because he has all my haircut records from my barber in Texas. What are you talking about? When I first moved here, I was nervous about finding a new barber, so my mother had all my haircut records sent here to Mr. D'Onofrio. <laughs> There's no such thing as haircut records. Yes, there are. Have you ever seen them? No, but my mother assured me they were sent here, and I'll bet you dollars to donuts that this one doesn't have them. Uh, excuse me. Do you have access to my haircut records? You what? To paraphrase T.S. Eliot, this is the way the world ends. Not with a bang, but with a nephew. Sheldon, you're a grown man. He's a professional, and your haircut is number three on that poster from 1946. Just sit down and let him do it. Fine. But if I come out of this looking like a dork, it's on you. <laughs> so my kid said the funniest thing today. Nope. When you tell this story later, the word we usually use is quirky. 